So what are the three main points that you're standing for? The three main points that I'm standing for, I think is, uh, one is um, managing the growth of our area, the Upper Clutha area, carefully and protecting what we've got. Uh, particularly, you know, we've got a beautiful spot. We've got a lovely small town character and feel. I think that's important. That's what people have come here for. Um, I think it's very, very important to, to make sure that we preserve that. I think we need to have plenty of collaboration and consultation from our from our communities to make sure that we get as much input as we can to get the best decisions um, for, that the community wants. It's not about one person's agenda or or um, our um, bureaucrats, I guess you could say, that to make the decisions. I think it's important that the community makes those decisions. Um, and I think the, a lot of things that have happened uh, over the last few years, 10 years in particular, the growth has been huge. Um, we're way behind on uh, infrastructure catch-up. Uh, you know, the population's doubled in 10 years or more and nothing's happened. You know, we've got the same issues, same things that we've been talking about all this time, nothing's happened. I think that infrastructure has to be kept right up to date and ahead of time, ahead of when it's required, not reacting to a problem after it's happened. So that that's the key to, to, to my uh, campaign, uh, is that, you know, planning, co coordination and cohesion, keeping the people involved and making sure our infrastructure's on time, not after it's needed. And you've already sort of answered it, but what, what is your position on growth in the region? Well, growth is something that we can't really stop growth. You know, there's all sorts of talk about capping visitor numbers and what have you, but what do you do? Do you we put a toll gate on the Red Bridge and, or close or put a wall at the top of the Crown Range? You can't stop people coming here. People have been coming here for over 150 years. They, they were coming here long before aeroplanes and motor cars were invented. People are still going to want to come here. If you stop one means of them getting here, they'll find another way of getting here. So the important part of it is we have to accept we've got growth, it's going to happen, we've got to manage it. And, and that's, that's the bottom line. We have to manage that growth. You know, we've got unusual situations where rate payers, particularly commercial rate payers, are paying to promote more visitors to come. They have to pay a levy to the Wanaka tourism people. They, so we're actively out there promoting more people to come. And um, the rate powers are then stuck with the bill for the infrastructure to cater for the extra tourists that we've paid to fund to promote to get here. So it's a bit of a catch-22. So we've got to be a lot smarter with the way we manage uh, that growth. How do you think our airport should be expanded, if at all? Well, the airport's an interesting one. The airport, Wanaka Airport, has a lot of history. It's, it goes right back to general aviation, private, I guess, private uh, aviators, small commercial aviators. It now hosts a, a, a big maintenance area, maintenance for fixed wing and, and uh, rotary aircraft. Uh, there's a lot of flight training done at the airport. Uh, so there's a lot of good jobs to be had at the airport. The airport, I believe, should be complementary to Queenstown. Um, I believe that, that what we've got there now needs to be well preserved. I believe that there is room for commercial activities. It, what, and it, it's, the airport question's opened up a wider discussion, and I think ultimately the decision has to come from the community, and I'm all for, for and encouraging that. The other thing that I'm very strong on is the governance group around the airport boardroom table are not domiciled in our area. I'm strong on good, strong local representatives in the boardroom. And should tourism continue to be our main industry? That's, that's, we'll always have tourism, but we are vulnerable when you're relying on one particular, I guess, sector or income stream. I think the secret for for our community is to diversify. I go back 20 odd years when young people found it hard to get a good job here in Wanaka and a lot of young people had to leave. It has changed. You know, tourism is, is certainly a major part of our uh, industry. Construction is another part, but I think we need to have as broad a base as possible. So, you know, we're in a different world now in terms of technologies, innovation, once again, a lot of people work remotely, don't have to have an office, you can have a computer and a cell phone and, 
and work from anywhere. I think we need to look at other options as well as tourism. Tourism will always be part of the equation, but I think if we're going to be smart about it, we need to encourage other options as well. And tell us a little bit about yourself and what brings up emotion for you about our community. Um, well, about myself, I've, uh, I came here first in 1975 and drove down Ardmore Street and I thought, wow, I'd love to live here. And it took me a long time to actually, um, I guess, like today, housing uh, costs were very high. It took me a long time to, go to, to get here. We managed to build our first house here in 1995, doing most of it ourselves and travelling every weekend to Wanaka to do it. Uh, we moved here permanently in 1998. I, I wake up in the morning and I look at the silhouette of the mountains and, and, and it just invigorates you, it encourages you, it makes you feel positive and enthusiastic and that has never changed. So.